Hello and welcome to the Minimum Effort Podcast. This is the first episode of what I hope is many. Today we have a guest and hopefully will eventually become a recurring guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself, tell people what you do and all that good stuff. Hello everyone, I'm Riley Grimes and I do nothing all day. No, um, for real though, I stream on Twitch. I haven't in a while because I've been moving in school and college and all that nonsense. But uh, I play video games and serve food professionally. Congratulations to that. I mean, food service is yeah. an awful, awful work environment. Oh, it's experience. the worst, but you make bank. <laughs> <laughs> if you get good tips, you make bank. Yep. So what do you... And, uh, Go ahead. Oh, I was going to... Uh, rural Pennsylvania in the middle of Christmas season is great tips. A lot of Dutch people. Yeah, has it snowed there yet this year or no? Like once. It's been raining for a week, though. That's that sucks. Yeah, we're actually in a in Florida, so I mean we're in hurricane warning ah, right now. Ah, oh boy, <laughs> we're like right off the bank of this tropical storm. It's been raining for like three I days, basically. Luck. Oh yeah, yeah we'll be fine. Catching, we've been catching the whiplash, but we haven't had much. <laughs> yeah, you guys probably just get the rain and all that. Not yeah, anything we don't crazy. get any of the wind or anything. So you you said you worked food service. What do you what do you do specifically? Uh, it's kind of funny. Right now I wait tables. Um, I won't give my place of work just because I don't know if that will get me in trouble with my place of work. Of course, safety reasons, <laughs> safety reasons. Um, yeah, but I will say, past jobs, I'll talk all the kinds of garbage on those. I, when I was 16, I started working at a retirement home in their dining experience because it was a bunch of old rich people. So I call it... W- diet waitering because i served tables and all that but it was the same old rich white people every day (laughs) i mean at least you get used to the clientele and all that yeah yeah and like that's what now where i work now i'm always like the go-to guy if like an old couple comes in because i like i know how to handle it you gotta pander to your audience (laughs) oh yeah honestly my uh my microphone voice and my server voice are like one cadence away from each other (laughs) <laughs> Man, I, I wish I could say I have a microphone voice. Like, I, I guess I talk more naturally than I do when I'm dealing with customers, because I work a handful of jobs, and when I yeah. deal with customers, I, I drop a couple octaves, I get real soft, and just like, yeah, how are you today? How's it going? And I get mistaken for a ma'am more often than not. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, it's funny, I get mistaken, at least in the retirement home. It's happened less now, but I get mistaken for a woman a lot because I have very long hair. Yeah. But now I've finally uh, grown somewhat of a beard, and uh, the people I talk to aren't in their 80s, so it's happening less. Well, that's good. You're either a uh, definitely a guy or a very, very butchy girl. So. Yeah. yeah, very <laughs> far on the right of the foot scale. <laughs> but, um... What does that mean to say? <laughs> Cass over here whispering, was that mean to say? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, there's no there's no borders in language. <laughs> so tell me about your Twitch career. Like, uh, what's what do you usually cool. stream? I saw you got to stream Spyro, and you did a completion speed run of that. Yeah, how, how was uh, that? So I, that's a whole story. Let me let me start at the beginning with this. I always wanted to do something with video games on the internet, even when I was in middle school. And I privatized it. Don't even try to find it. But <laughs> in middle school, I created a Let's Play channel that was me in my bedroom playing just one-off games. I think the first game I ever did a Let's Play of was Mega Man X because I watched Game Grumps and I was like, hey, this game seems pretty cool. Yeah, Mega and Man's I tried great. my best. Yeah, I tried my best to be entertaining and it was awful. <laughs> yeah, I remember my first video. It was me and my friend Jack in my bedroom, and I've lost the video, so it's still on the internet. I can't find it. Oh, no. Hopefully oh. no one else can find it, but I'll we're playing... What, it... what was that? Podcast gets popular. If this podcast gets popular, people will find it. It'll be found, and I will never be able to live <laughs> it down. Yeah. But... Sorry, I guess we cut out there for a second. I'll fix yeah. it in editing for the best part. But, um, as I was saying, you know, me my old video was me and my friend Jack playing freaking, uh, it was Injustice 1. Okay. And it's just the cringiest thing. 
Like, I'm trying to make edgy jokes, and it's just not... Yeah. It's not good, you know? Oh, I remember. <sighs> Me in middle school trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that's young trying to be funny, the immediate go-to is edge. Yep. And that's it's... What... It's always the most cringy thing. But, you know, as I was saying, I don't think anyone's going to find it. I know it's lost to the internet at the moment. But, um, you know, my hair, was, my hair was dyed black. I was wearing a hoodie. It's going to be pretty hard to find it. That's just ammunition on the pile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if it's found, I'm screwed. Yeah. I'm so excited. No, I know. Like, I... Whew, I've got... They weren't, like, edgy. I think they were just bad, my old videos. I think <laughs> there's probably some edge in there, but, like, it was just not good. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, your Spyro speedrun, you were telling me about that. Yeah, um, so, uh, after a while, I moved to Twitch just because I started watching it, and I thought it was really cool, and I started playing Twitch a lot, and uh, playing on Twitch a lot, and it was just all these, like, random one-off games, and I always liked playing the older games, and I'm like, what, how can I start just, like, playing the same game over and over again, and that's about the time I started really getting into speedrunning and seeing other people do it, and the one game that always clicked for me was Spyro 2, and those speedruns associated. And I was never able to play the, or do the speedruns for the old games, because they were very complicated and intricate with all of the brokenness. And then the Reignited Trilogy came out, and I was all over that, and I started speedrunning it, like, day one, and after the first week before... <laughs> It's kind of funny the timing and way it worked out. After the first week, I got number 13 on the Any% percent speedrun board with like a two hour and like nine minute time. And then the very same day, four hours later, the first major skip was found out. And the world record went from an hour and 40 minutes to 19 minutes. Jesus! <laughs> So the very, well, I mean, that process took a couple days, but the very same day, fucking four out oh, pardon me, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. Yeah, you can I'm curse a, here, it doesn't okay, matter. Okay, cool, because I'm a very, uh, I'm bad with that. As am I, I, I have a bad potty mouth, but continue. <laughs> um, yeah, literally four hours after I had my triumphant moment in the sun, the entire category was blown to smithereens, to the point where they had to rename the category 40 Orb and make a new separate category for the new end so I'm still technically number 13 on the 40 orb speedrun, but it's not the primary speedrun for that game anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I've never really been into speedrunning, but yeah. I've always enjoyed playing games, and I've completed a handful of games, but I've never been one to, how fast can I beat this? The only game I can remember ever attempting to speedrun was a Pokemon Fire Red I tried to speedrun when I was like 16. Yeah. And I beat it in, I think, three hours, and that's with that's completing the decks. Bad, yeah. You know, that was with completing the decks. And that's I've seen people good. do it in an hour and a half, and it's like, yeah, I don't know yeah. how you did that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know my first taste of it, me and my uh, fiancé did a race of all the original three Spyro games, and I was like, this is, this is kind of fun. And I'm like, I just kind of started getting into it. I get you. You must be really, you, know, you must be really on that whole uh, Toys for Bob recreating all the old, you know, Sony classics. All, all over it. Well, that's like, I was worried because I thought they were going to use the new Skylanders model for Spyro. I'm glad they didn't. Ugly. I'm so glad they didn't. They did a really good job with it. Like, yeah, there's some things that weren't like perfect, but it was a good job. I think. Oh they did yeah. A good job with it. Considering what they're going off of is like a. 15 year old game and a licensing agreement. I yeah, think what like they did with it was great. Deserve all the vitriol received. Oh, yeah. And I, I got the Crash game recently just because I was a big Crash fan growing up. And they yeah. recently announced at the Game Awards not long ago that they're going to do Crash Team Racing next. Oh, I'm so hyped for that. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I'm really excited for it, just because, you know, CTR on the old PlayStation, that was that was the way to go. <laughs> yeah, I remember my old PlayStation, we didn't have any working memory cards, so whenever you wanted to play a game, you'd have to leave it running the whole time and just turn off the TV, and I was never able to beat any PlayStation game, because at some point, something would happen and it would turn off. That's how I beat Final Fantasy IX. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just don't ever touch it, leave it on all the time, and hope. Mm-hmm. A power surge is your least... It is like the, the the worst thing that could happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that, that's what post production's for. Oh, of course. It's what all the editing's for. Yeah. So, have you been on any other podcasts before? Have you done anything like this before? I. No, I actually. I've always, like, toyed around with the idea, but I never knew how to, like, start. My, my biggest issue with most of creative projects in my life is I'll start them and then immediately stop. Because See, I have awful anxiety, I'm a procrastinator, and it never works. If if I'm the head of a project, it won't happen. That's just a fact. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Like, I get really, really hyped for something that I want to do, mm-hmm. thinking about it. And then when it comes to the actual, all right, let's go, it never, never seems like it wants to get done. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, mostly because, what if this sucks? You know, yeah. what if everyone I, hates what I'm doing? Yeah, and, yeah. That's the and main like, driving the... force for the lack of content on my channel. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also why I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll start a podcast. That's, it's low effort, you know, I'll have on people want to hear. Yeah, and just hanging out and talking. Exactly. It's not super anxiety filling. It's not super like, yeah, this is my creative downforce. This is me putting everything into this. But, you know, it's it's relieving to know I can do something like this and, even if my fans hate it, I still created something that I'm still happy with without being discouraged that everyone hated it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, I, I know with projects specifically, um, social anxiety is a blessing and a curse. It's a curse whenever I'm trying to do something that I'm heading, like I said, because there's that, like you said, that fear of, oh, what if this is awful? Oh, what if no one likes it? Uh, it's not taken off. But it's a blessing in the sense of group creative projects because I'm just terrified to let people down. So I'm always like, <laughs> I'm always like, yes, I'll do my part. Yeah, blah, 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 you know. Um, unless, of course, it gets too much. I know, like, I, the one experience I had with a podcast was I said I could edit these guys online. It was like a, like, I, I wasn't, it wasn't like a job or anything. It was just like, hey, we need an editor, and I was like, I'm not doing anything, and I edited, like, their first two podcasts, and then it just got too much, because they're like, yeah, we want to do a bi-weekly, two-hour podcast, I'm like, I go to college, I can't do that. (laughs) Yeah, all this is going to be is, like, a weekly one hour, hour and a half, depending on how conversation goes, you know? Yeah. If it feels like it's difficult, you know, we'll cut it short, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it was all like they all had separate recording tracks, and they're like, "Edit out our coughs," and I'm like, "You gotta be kidding!" Me. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I leave in junk. Student. You know, I'm gonna leave in junk and noise, and I'm just gonna edit out dead silences, or you know, where the call broke up earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I've actually applied for editing jobs too. Like I applied to edit for Max Mofo when he was looking for an editor a couple years ago, and I did hear back, but never never got like the yeah come on let's do this you know yeah but i mean it's all a work in progress i guess we'll see how it goes mm-hmm. so um dang i lost my train of thought <laughs> <laughs> try that again threshold syndrome yeah threshold sim- syndrome yeah we're here for talking so we better stick to those <laughs> So, uh, speaking of threshold syndrome, (laughs) let's continue on that thought then. Sure. Um, I I like the idea. It's a theory that that I've been pondering. Everyone's life, we're all just sims, and someone canceled our action when we forget what we're doing. Okay. I thought it was kind of a funny thought that there's just some omniscient being playing sims and all of our lives are meaningless. I could see that. I I think there'd be more death by ladder removal. Oh, yeah, a lot more you death. Know, I feel, I feel like there'd be more. I don't know. Is it? Yes. I like Oops. that idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you watch movies? What movies are you into? No, I don't watch movies. No, I'm kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> what oh, kind no. of I, demon I, are you? I, abs- <laughs> I abstain from entertainment media. I think it's for plebeians. <laughs> I refuse um, to indulge in common entertainment. <laughs> if it makes me smile, it's garbage. It's bad. Watch out. Um, I don't know, most. Uh, that's, <laughs> I do, I do, that, that, I'm, I'm, I'm too much of a, of a renaissance man. I dabble in everything, but I'm not great at anything. <laughs> I totally understand that. So like, 
I, I, I enjoy most movies, but I wouldn't say I have a favorite, like, genre or type. I don't know. I like... I like, I like stand-up comedy. That doesn't really count. Like, my, <laughs> most of my Netflix is stand-up comedy and, like, that one American Ninja that Warrior awesome. ripoff. <laughs> Jewish guy. Um, no. But, yeah, I don't know if I have, like, a yeah. favorite genre or anything. So, speaking of stand-up, I, I, I'm also really into stand-up on Netflix. And I gotta okay. say, what they're doing for a new stand-up artist is great. I'm so happy with it, yeah. Like, uh, I, we recently have rewatched the uh, the Dimitri one, the talking, is it talking to myself? Uh, something like that, yeah, yeah. Overthinking? Something like that. Overthinking with myself or something like that. Yeah, and it was really good. I think the guy's really funny. Yeah, I was so, ha- I was so happy to see work from him. Yeah, he has two... Two specials on Netflix alone. I, I thought they were really good. And they're really like good. ten years apart. <laughs> yeah, but he's really funny. I like his stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I have a kind of a history with comedy. I know when I first got to college, I started in improv troupe. Well, I didn't start in, in. I didn't start in improv troupe. I started. You joined one. Working. Yeah, I joined one. That's the word. <laughs> I was like started working within a. How do I say it? Yeah, I joined an improv troupe. Um, and that was pre- that pretty much shaped my college experience, and it got me into a lot of comedy stuff. I know I did. Um, they have a stand-up thing every semester. I've done it, like, every semester. It's so fun. Um, and uh, uh, that really opened my eyes to stand-up, and I've been watching a lot of it. Just, like, it's just so interesting to watch the craft, you know? And then you also get to laugh. It's just a, a, a nice time. Oh, yeah. Stand-up comedy is an art all of its own. I mean, not... Yeah. not there's not enough people that do it good, and I know that's yeah. it, comedy is subjective; it's all opinion. But I mean, like, there's a lot of people that I just I just don't find them funny. Yeah, like, and, and like, yeah, yeah, comedy is subjective, but it also has those objective point marks, you know, those objective touchstones that, like, yeah. a lot of comedians you can say they're objectively not great, you know. And comedy is subjective; some people will find it funny, but if they incorporated those objective touchstones and all that, then like. What? More people would like him. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We could all agree, I'm sure. No offense to anyone out there that actually does enjoy it, but Amy Schumer is the worst stand-up comedian I've ever heard. Thank you. I, I, I think she's <laughs> horrible. Oh, and, uh, and, and a joke stealer. And who? And a joke stealer. Oh, yeah, she's a horrible joke stealer. What she did, to, yeah. even though I know, I, know, I know Louis C.K. has his own issues, but all the jokes she stole from him, like... I know his career is ruined for the whole, you know, jerking off thing, but, yeah. but I mean, she stole like half of her bits just from that one guy, mm-hmm. and that's just a really sad way to leap off into a career. Yeah. Oh, there's like, there's like so many compilations on YouTube of just like back and forths. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, I like listening to her tell her, tell her joke, and then like side by side, he's telling the same joke. But I think those are great. Better. Oh yeah, but even, but better. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to college for if you don't mind sharing uh yeah no problem i hate money so i'm going for an english degree uh oh. specifically linguistics um because i think it's interesting and like i said before i hate money <laughs> so why why <laughs> linguistics i don't know i just i always i i was never sure and i'm still not sure what i want to do with my life um but when i got oh that's my dryer sorry to scare everyone oh, that's all right <laughs> So do you have a favorite um, book? Hey. Uh, but I went to college for English uh, <laughs> just because I knew I always had a passion for it. And then in English, I took a class on linguistics. I was like, this is dope. And I just started taking more classes, and I accidentally walked my way into a minor. Congratulations. Yeah. Go ahead, Gas. No. No. <laughs> what a punk. <laughs> Cassie yeah. asked you a question and then backed out of it because she's a scared <laughs> punk. I want to know. <laughs> I was just curious if you had a favorite book. Oh. Okay. It's a hard Subjectively, favorite. like emotionally, I always have to give it to The Book Thief. That was the first book that ever, and probably the only book that ever, like, made me cry. Um, The Book Thief is just a really, really goddamn good book. But objectively speaking... Oh, probably From the Earth to the Moon. Well, I've heard of one of them, but not the other. Um, uh, the Book Thief was a pretty recent book from Marcus Zusak about 
a uh, little German girl in the middle of the Holocaust. It's super sad and depressing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then From the Earth to the Moon is a 1880 science fiction novel by Jules Verne. <laughs> Where it, it predates the rocket. It's wild. Like, the rocket wasn't even talked about at this point. But in the book, they describe going to the moon in a rocket. But his idea of it is a bunch of dudes from America who loved making guns couldn't make guns anymore because the war was over. So they all got sad. So then they went, what if we just make a really big gun and shoot the moon? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's okay. the book. That's the whole book is them doing that. <laughs> like, all right. It's just such a fun satire on like culture around guns and all that. So is it like a is it like a historic novel or is it like is this like someone's I, I idealistic would, way to do it or is it like science fiction? Would, it's very science fiction. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's historic. It's, it's a documentary. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear about the time we shot the moon with a giant gun? Um, Man, yeah, the eighties no, were weird. <laughs> I mean, science fiction is always like fake history, but uh. Yeah, no, it definitely doesn't, like, glorify guns, right? It's very much a satire on that idea of it. So, uh, I, as you said earlier, you're a renaissance man of yeah. fine culture. Where where do you stand on the current war? Which one? PewDiePie versus T-Series? <laughs> <laughs> the only important one? <laughs> you're right, you're right. Um, I wouldn't... I, now, I don't like to give out my political opinion on subscribe to PewDiePie on any kind of uh, entertainment or anything like that. Um, but I will say that if T-Series wins, it's like saying Watch Mojo is a worthwhile channel. <laughs> That's all. And I think fucking, I think recently I just checked, I think PewDiePie like stomped out t-series with the whole subscribe to pewdiepie meme going around oh yeah it's he's jumped up six million in the last 30 yeah. days and that's crazy and t-series got hit with a bunch of tax evasion and stuff so they did they little... oh yeah you didn't hear about all the audits getting aimed at t-series no i didn't hear about that at all uh apparently they've been like evading taxes for a while so i think Jesus. i think we won this one <laughs> i i think the war is over then boys <laughs> pack it up pack let's it go up. home yeah. <laughs> Did you hear about our recently lost soldier that happened yesterday? Mm. So, uh... <laughs> so Hentai Haven has shut its doors. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, they shut down. They said, they'll, they'll, they said they'll be back when PewDiePie has 100 million subs. No, I need that. <laughs> Everyone needs that. Shit, I'm gonna go subscribe to PewDiePie. <laughs> <laughs> the war's still going, I guess. <laughs> Hi. What what is he at at this point? Sub count. I don't know. Seventy six mil. Seventy seven mil. Probably something like that. Socialblade.com. Let's compare it. <laughs> um. <laughs> where's just like the numbers, please? <laughs> so, uh, just to continue conversation, we can come back to the to the war. Yeah. 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 So uh, what do you do outside of YouTube besides college? Like, what do you just do for fun? What do you do on your what weekends? Do fun? I don't know. I have to. That's it's hit me in the face recently because I was always I lived at home and whenever I wasn't at work, I was like playing video games because I'm like, well, I don't have a I don't have a place of my own, so what else am I gonna do? And now I have a place of my own, and it's it's fucking terrifying. I don't know what I do for fun. <laughs> if that if that makes sense, like I, I I literally had two days off and I sat around going, "What do I do now?" <laughs> and then I started playing a video game. <laughs> like I think I've just ruined myself. <laughs> Should have stayed in the basement. Apparently, I think <laughs> I think what I do for fun is what I do for Twitch, but by myself. If that's sad, see, it's, it's, the difference is I'll be on Twitch and I'll play video games and try to be entertaining. And then when I turn off the camera, I breathe, I grab some mac and cheese, and I keep playing video games, but silently. Yeah. See, I, I thought about getting into Twitch, but I just, I, I lack the equipment for it, mainly. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 the equipment is secondary. The content's always primary. Oh, it yeah. It helps, though. It does definitely help. I know... Once I switched to a better microphone, I started getting a bit more traffic. Yeah, I need to get a better microphone. Mine's pretty, pretty, pretty garbage. 
I mean, it depends on what you're using it for. It sounds, I'll tell you what, it sounds good over Discord, but I couldn't tell you the actual feedback of it from Discord, you know? Oh, I checked the feedback earlier when I, before we were, uh, sorry, stuttered. When we were starting to record, it sounded fine. We sounded okay. okay. But, I mean, I'm just kind of, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I know, like, uh, oh, pardon me. Um, the microphone I'm using is like, the lowest tier of professional possible because I'm broke. The struggles so, like, of a modern creator. Yeah. <laughs> First world know, problems. Like, grab like a fifty dollar microphone and like a twenty dollar interface. And I'm like, good enough. Yes, I'm like, yeah, that was already out of budget for me. But like, <laughs> yeah, it's always making do. Nah, the last thing I bought for my channel that was anything worthwhile was the computer. You know. Yeah. Uh, my computer is my baby. I know, like, I've always wanted to build my own computer, and I finally had the time and, like, See, funds, and I was like, oh, time to do this. My you issue know? is the funds. I would love to build my own computer. Right now, I'm using an older uh, Alienware laptop, which is, it's fine. It works. It's yeah, good. Yeah, it does its job, especially Alienware. They last for a while. But I want to build my own computer. I want yeah. one with all the specs that I want. <laughs> and it's just... I'm just glad that the whole Bitcoin boom is over so I can finally get a freaking <laughs> get yeah. a graphics chip finally. <laughs> they were using them all for the freaking mining. Mine. Yeah. Uh, they were using them all to mine and it's just eh. they limited people to like one per like year. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I looked it up, not to interrupt. No, go yeah. ahead. We're Pewdiepie's bouncing around. 77.8. He's so close. T series is currently at. Uh, wait, how did? Hold on. It, I lost it. All right, so he's at seventy-seven point eight. T series is currently at seventy-six point three, and gaining them somewhat steadily. All so right, it's still closer than I thought. The war is still going. So everyone, stop yeah. listening to this immediately. Go subscribe to PewDiePie. Don't even bother coming back if you don't want to. But the real important thing here: go do that. All right, I found a video of, like, a live sub count. This is wild. Oh, yeah, it's been going on for, like, a couple months now. Speaking of uh, YouTube news, you hear about Epic Rap Battles coming back. Yeah, I heard they are coming out of retirement, quote-unquote retirement. Yeah, right? Now I, we just... I'm so hyped. That, that was, like, my middle school go-to. Oh, yeah, now just to get Lonely Island back and we'll have early yeah. 2000s YouTube back. Yeah. I mean, we still got poods, so I mean, it's still it's still running. Yeah. Oh, he, I mean, he doesn't play video games anymore, but you know what? That's every day is just Friday with PewDiePie now. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, I don't know if you still watch his content. I regularly do, but I I want to get back into it. Um, I didn't for a while. Um, I know I was definitely that edgy like early high school, and we're like PewDiePie. What am I, a child? <laughs> and then I. After all this, like, T-series drama, I was like, what is he doing? Because I, I hadn't watched him in, like, years. And, I mean, I liked what I saw, so I'll probably go back to it. I know I subscribed, so. So who would you say is your favorite YouTuber? Like, out of everyone oh. on the platform. That's That's a tricky one. I watch a lot of different things, but I'd have to say... For consistency, quality over the entire lifespan of me watching their channel, Rhett and Link, by far, far not. I can respect that. They've been <laughs> on the platform for quite a while. They've done a Years. lot of content. Yeah. And they are a very consistent channel. Yeah. And I, I gotta say, my favorite, <laughs> even though for the lack of consistency, the product that he puts out is such high quality that I think it more than makes up for a lack of content. But JonTron is one of the best creators on this platform. I, I can't argue with that. He's definitely on the top tier. I thought you were, it, for a second. I thought you were about to say Freddy Greddy. Do you know that? No, channel? I don't know who that is. Okay, it's uh, he does like music medleys, and it's wild because I thought he dropped off the face of the earth because he hadn't made a video in years, you know. And then out of nowhere, no hubbub, no anything. He just posted a new video. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think, yeah, the video I saw him first in was eight years ago, where it's a TV theme medley. 
Yeah. And then he just stopped. He only has 33 videos, and he's been out for eight years. He Jesus. just dropped off the face of the earth and then posted a video like once a year for a while. And then out of nowhere, just dropped two videos. <laughs> See, that, and that's how John does it, man. It's like, yeah. here's two videos. Now I'm going away for nine months. See you later. You know, yeah, and it's like, here's another video. <laughs> yeah, here's one video. I'll see you in a year. And I, I, I realize what he's doing can't be made more consistent because of high, how high quality it is. Yeah. Like, I, I, he could probably crank out one a month, if mm-hmm. that. But I mean, I don't think there's any real excuse for eight months off the platform. But yeah, I mean, right. Take, take the time you need, I guess. <laughs> and it's always like whenever he drops a new video, like seven new memes come out of it that everyone uses because there's such just there's such good quotes in those videos. Oh yeah, it's very very good videos. I, I yeah. in, like I said, in my opinion, he's easily one of the best creators on this platform. Yeah. And you know, I just I I, I can agree with you though. Rhett and Linker are, are really good too, but when it comes to like daily talk shows, you know. I know they're not daily, but weekly. I'm a big fan of uh, Critical and his uh, his official podcast. Okay. I don't know if you know I, who I they see, are. I haven't. I haven't gotten into Critical. I haven't. Ju- I just haven't given him a shot yet. Yeah. Um. But I have. I know I probably enjoy Critical's content. Just for, I've seen enough of the peripheral content in that like area. Oh yeah, it's hard to avoid him. He's got a lot of yeah. content. Yeah. Um. I, it's weird. I watch, like, a few people in, like, a bunch of genres. I know, like, I watch, like, Slazo and Sorrow TV and a couple people in, like, that, like, Reddit meme genre. Yeah. And then I'll be over in... I don't know why. I don't know where this came from, but, like, three months ago, I went from not watching any movie or TV show critique to watching, like, six different animation critique channels. And I don't know where it came from. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> So do you do you watch a lot of animation or a lot of animated stuff or? I'd say so. Yeah, I. It's not on purpose. It's just good stuff. Like <laughs> I watch uh, anything from anime to Ladybug and Cat Noir. You know. Yeah. Well, what animes <laughs> are you into? Hey, no, that show is. Get out of here with your laughing at me. No. Ha. Well, no. well we talk about Lady. We, we laugh. Yes. About, yes, like, we're talking oh, about French Ladybug. CGI. TV show that comes out in Spanish on YouTube once a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's a bad. Struggle to like that show. I don't blame you. I'm not gonna blame you for thinking it's bad. Cass over <laughs> but, here. She keeps like begging, beating, and prodding me to enjoy this show, and I, I just can't do it. Prod. I genuinely enjoy kids shows most of the time because. But it's so bad. Not- I, I love it in a sense of I enjoy it, but I also, it's weird. It's, to me, it's bad and good, because I enjoy watching it, but the things that are, like, cringy just make me like it. <laughs> you know it's what just, I mean? like, seizure levels of cringe. <laughs> like, it, it reminds me of the good old, like, Sailor Moon days, and I miss that kind God, of stuff. God, old Sailor Moon. That's That's been dead for years, though. Yeah. It's- so have you, have you been keeping up the current resurgence of Dragon Ball? I've never gotten into. Really? Dragon Ball's super popular in the West. Get ready. Yeah. I'm really I'm like, really I into Dragon it. Ball. It's a good show. I get it. Like I completely get liking that series. I just I've tried it and I just don't. No, it's not for everyone, I guess. I mean, I, I just I think it's great. You know. Yeah. And it's something that's got a lot of hype as of late. You know, their their T V series just ended its most recent season a couple months ago oh, okay. and they got a movie coming out next month oh man so i was just you know are you on this hype <laughs> no i'm not that's what my <laughs> man i'm trying to think of like the classic stuff i'm into i mean i've got every printed manga of naruto that's my my <laughs> my love child i can't that's what got me into anime so i have to shout out respect to him oh, i understand that's that. so cool <laughs> Um, I know Amanda's super into Rave Master, which is not a good anime by any stretch. I've never heard of that one. Is what is Nobody it? Nobody has. <laughs> it's not good. Is I that, love it so much, but it's bad. Is that by the um, same person who did Fairy Tale? Yes, it is. And she I have heard of that, and it's that. it's not bad. It's just not great. Yeah, and she. <laughs> and I know Amanda also gets mad about that because she doesn't like Fairy Tale. <laughs> what? Fairy Tale's great. What's wrong? 
Oh, yeah, no, she, she's the definition of counterculture. I love her. Um, but, yeah, Rave Master, I will say, the original anime of Rave Master is fine, but the four kids version that we watch is so bad it's great. <laughs> Speaking of four kids, have you seen the four kids dubs of One Piece? They're oh, great. Oh, that's your sweet bippy I have. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing oh, like replacing the every... The that Sanji loves. <laughs> oh, yeah, not really like replacing every gun with, like, a freaking spring-loaded fi- frying pan. Um, <laughs> Four kids. You know where they had the police officers just point at people? Oh yeah, no guns, just wave your finger angrily. <laughs> Not to mention they changed like all the outfits in in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Like Twitch. Can- can't show that one inch of cleavage. Gonna have to put that away. Twitch. <laughs> Man, what other what other anime? I'll tell you what. I have to give favorite short anime because there's a there's that genre of anime that's like two seasons long max, you know. <laughs> and my favorite one of those I always have to give to the everyday life of high school boys. Never heard of that. What's it, it about? It is the funniest anime I've ever seen. See, I uh, I have um, a guilty pleasure anime, and uh, I think it's I think it's Ginshi Master of Killing Time. I have not heard of that. Isn't that only on YouTube? No, it's on it's on Shonen Jump's website. Is it? I think so. Hmm. But it's about a kid in high school that just kills time during class. That's the whole thing. Oh, you know what? I ha- I've seen clips of that, and I would love to watch it because I you... saw a clip. Great. <laughs> um, yeah, and then Everyday Life is the same kind of vein, but it's just like these three, like just high school boys being idiots but it's so funny it's just done so well um and it's like i've only seen it on youtube dubbed like or subbed rather it's not dubbed no one loves it (laughs) (laughs) so uh what movies have you seen recently movies have i seen recently i guess the most recent movie to come out that i've seen would probably be wreck it ralph 2 was it good? I haven't seen it, but I heard it was really good. I would say it's... Well, I I want to start off with saying it's very good. Does it, um, does it live up to the first one? It's... I guess it's a moot point to say the sequel isn't as good, because most people know that, except for... I think there's, like, two exceptions to that, and one of them is How to Train Your Dragon, but we'll get to there. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy. Um, I'm ready for that conversation. Yeah, um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it doesn't live up to the first one because it's a very good movie. Um, I think it's a much, much better interpretation of the internet than the emoji movie was. Yeah, was it? Was it a better interpretation than the emoji movie? One hundred percent. Oh god, they're not <laughs> even the same. Like they're not in the same ballpark. All right, like. Where, where Wreck-It Ralph 2 hit home runs, the Emoji Movie was cleaning up the parking lot next door. <laughs> so speaking of uh, How to Train Your Dragon, Cassidy is like the go-to on that I'm, show. I'm really not. You really are. I, I watched um, Race to the Edge recently, the series. Okay. And I didn't watch the series. Is that good? It was okay. Again, watching it as like nostalgia factor of, hey, I used to watch this when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. It's strange, but the the the, the storyline was pretty decent. Okay. Knowing what like the movies are in place and all that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't watched that yet. I it, I it, I was always on edge of TV shows that spawned from movies. It's it's like the go. What happens between um, crap. one and two? Y- yeah. They're- okay. I, I had a mind blank for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sp- um, speaking of movies and animations and stuff, or, or were you, do you have more to add to that point? No, I was, I was just going to say two was better than one, but I have not seen three yet. I'm super excited for the new one. Because, it, yeah. It looks good. It looks good. <laughs> but continue what I was going to say. How do you feel about yeah. the Netflix uh, next edition to the Avatar series? Because, I mean... The M. Night Shyamalan movie of Avatar was freaking garbage. So Yeah, it was absolutely awful. What, what's, what are you, are, are, is, is this the, uh, 
live action we were talking about? Yeah. Yeah, the live action, but the creators have control of it. I'm I'm worried just because I think the best thing to do with such a cherished series like Avatar is to do something Korra did. Not to say Korra was amazing. I personally I dislike Korra at the much. moment. You didn't yeah, finish Korra. You have no right to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I watched a good majority of it and I kind of fell off. It just didn't have the same charm. Not to bash the show. Apparently there were other problems, but I didn't see it all the way through. But I think the best thing to do with such a cherished series like Avatar is do something like Korra did, where it's just, what else can happen in this world? Or just let it be and let it exist. Yeah. You know, let it live on in nostalgia, then why exactly. why do you need to add more to it? The story's told its story, let it be. You yeah, know? like, I think and needless remakes. Oh, um, yeah. Especially, I, I, was it Saber Spark? Maybe it was Saber Spark. There was a animation critique YouTuber that did a video on the Disney remakes, and they made a great point where they're fine movies and they don't damage the originals, but they do contribute to the stereotype that animation's for kids. Oh yeah, definitely, hundred percent. And I'm worried the same thing will happen with Avatar, where it's oh great, now there's an adult version of the show. I can watch. Well, the original was just fine. Okay, so they didn't curse and there weren't any titties in it, but it was a perfectly fine show for adults and everyone else. It didn't need titties. I'm gonna go out on exactly. a limb and say that it was perfectly exactly. fine without the titties. It doesn't need to be adult. Just because something's PG doesn't mean it's for kids. Exactly. I really enjoyed watching through Avatar. I, we watched yeah. it last year, two years ago? Last year. Last year, and I, I was 20 at the time, and it's like, man, I still had a really good time watching it yeah. all the way through as such an adult. good moments in that show. Oh, yeah. It's a really it's a really heartwarming show, and a lot of yeah. shows I have nostalgia for like that, where it's like, yeah, I don't need an adult version of this. Why, yeah. are, we, why like, are we adding things to this? Like... <laughs> it was still in that perfect era of it wasn't kid shows, they were family shows. Exactly. Where anyone could enjoy it. And it's not adult for being adult's sake. And back to anime. Avatar is actually what got me into anime. Like yeah, it was one was of the first things anyways. you know, that opened the door. <laughs> Mine was that, that and Pokemon were like the Oh two yeah. Ones. God, Pokemon's huge still oh, though. Oh, I yeah. take that I'm... back. <laughs> not to not to be rude, but I'm currently, like, on the side, on my desk, every now and then poking my 3DS to go through a gym battle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cass was playing Smash Brothers, so don't feel bad. I didn't get very far. I was trying to go I through the tutorial. I just finished getting all the characters for the new one. Yeah, we just got it today. We just got the oh, new nice. one. I, I literally, doors open, 10 a.m., got it day of played it nonstop. I'm such a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which Pokemon game are you playing? Uh, Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, how is it? I haven't played anything on the 3DS yet. My last game okay. that I played was black and white. Because I, I never I never got a 3DS, and now we have yeah. Let's Go. We got, we got Let's Go because we have a Switch. Oh, I can't wait for Let's Go. I'm hoping to get it for Christmas. If not, I'll just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's um, like to be an adult. If I, if someone doesn't get it for me, I'll just get it for myself. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be my own Santa Claus. <laughs> Merry um, Christmas to me. Because <laughs> it is just a remake of the third generation, which is probably my favorite. Yeah, yeah um, the third generation was one of my favorites as well. Yeah, it just had so many of my favorite Pokemon in it. It, 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 we, it, it hit me at that perfect age of like eight and nine. Yeah. Where you know, it's like, here's the third gen, enjoy, and it's like, yeah, guess I'm gonna go back and play the other ones. Yeah. And it's I, weird. Go the ahead. game I played the least of, uh, Diamond and Pearl, was probably the series I watched the most of. See, I, I'm very different than that. Diamond and Pearl was the one that I played the most, but I never played uh, Sapphire, not Sapphire, uh, Silver or Gold. Okay. But I watched I, all I of the Jota series. I <laughs> I know, like, I was always... I don't know, Silver and Gold is a very convoluted path. Like, I can't... I, to this day, cannot beat that game without a... Oh, yeah. I don't know where to go. Yeah, th <laughs> their map makes no sense. Like, I don't understand how people in, like, the early 90s, before, like, open wide internet was a thing, yeah. how they were, like, figuring that out. Oh, God, I remember the good old days where 
at the Scholastic Book Fair. You... I bought the cheat code book that had oh, cheat code yeah. for popular games. Speaking of cheat code books, did you know that company that used to make them went out of business this year? They oh, just man. went out of I business. Mean, it, I'm surprised they lasted this long, to Me be too. honest. I'm surprised they even tried. Like, they knew they were screwed once freaking yeah. uh, uh, GameFAQs was a thing. They were screwed. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. I should but, see if I still have that book. I, I think I do in the garage, but I'm not going to go digging for it. I don't need it yeah. anymore. The internet's more useful anyways. Yeah. But it, it, there's just a little bit of nostalgia to flipping through those pages looking for a cheat code to an old game. That had like a thousand games I never even heard. Oh, yeah. There were so many games like that. Did he cut out again? I think so. Oh, did I? Oh, uh, yeah, you cut out for a second. You're back now. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> that that honestly could also be, like I said, my mic is super directional, so I, I was, like, looking at the ground. It could have also been a thing. All right. I, I just making sure the hurricane isn't, you know, creeping up on us. <laughs> you know, as they say in the thing, in the eye of a hurricane, I am quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go quiet. That means it's getting closer. <laughs> I don't want to be a musical fanboy, but that is a good that is a good show. What movie was it? Uh, uh, Hamilton. Yeah. The Broadway show. Cass is well, what's the one you were watching recently? It was like uh, I haven't Chicago, watched... right? That's not no, Brian. Am no. I dumb? Yes. Oh, I'm dumb. Explain. Okay, so no, I haven't seen any Broadway musicals. Um, Chicago is a movie about. A Broadway musical. Oh. It's done well. Yeah, it's done really well. It's a really great movie. So I'm just yeah. a stupid. You're not stupid. No, we're just nerds. Yeah. That's just what it is. Um, um. Well, I stand by my point. Sweeney Todd is the best musical I've ever seen. <laughs> I'll get, it's a good show. I'll give you that. I, I do <laughs> like that show a lot. It's got a special place in my heart, too. It was my first community theater role. Yeah? Well, who were yeah. you in it? Uh, Alright, so I'm going to explain first to not get anyone's hopes up. Okay. Uh, it was a student-run community theater program that had three males in it. Oh, oh. nice. So you... I got Sweeney Todd because I was one of three. Nice. <laughs> um, I don't want to say, oh, I was Sweeney Todd. It was very low budget, very low stakes. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying um, is there wasn't much to pick from. Yeah. The other, <laughs> uh, I think our Anthony was a female. Uh, we double casted, and the other Sweeney Todd was also a female. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that that's definitely a special place in my heart because that was like my first big role. You know, that's actually not the first time I've heard that. Like, is Sweeney Todd just re- regularly played? It's a pretty popular show, especially because like. It fits that niche of high school angst. Oh, very much yeah. so. Yeah. I guess that makes um, sense. Like, that show and, uh, the one. Pippin. Those two. I've actually never very... never seen anything or heard anything about Pippin. I've heard of it, but I've ne- I don't know anything about it. I've heard the soundtrack for a while. I'm, let me, uh, 80% of my music library is musical soundtracks. <laughs> Do you listen um, to Wicked? <laughs> yes, I do listen to Wicked. I will say, I think it's a little overrated. Not saying it's bad. No. I just don't think it's as good as people say it is. Well, again, you have to remember that it's from 2002. And yeah. It's it's good for the era that it comes from. Yeah, no, totally. It's a good show. It's just not the best show of all time. Yeah, no. Um, That was... The next one that uh, Shitty Community Theater Group did, and I got to be the wizard, because I was one of three guys. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, liking those odds! <laughs> yeah, um, I, my resume's awesome, because I don't have to write down that I was one of three guys on my resume. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, go ahead. Yeah, I was, uh, so I, I listened to Pippin's soundtrack for a while, but I never saw the show, I never read the script. And then my college is putting on Pippin in the spring, so I auditioned for it. And uh, I got Charlemagne, which is like Pippin's dad, and I was super hype about it. I finally read the show. This show is nothing like I thought it was. This show's wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually just about to ask if you were doing any college performances, since most of your high school career seems to have been 
littered with community work. I was going to ask if you had any college work of more recent. I have been trying to get into it. I've been I've gotten like smaller parts in some plays. I know I got to play. This is a weird role. I always have to explain it. My friend Rashid uh, Wesley put on his own. He wrote it. It was amazing. He wrote a musical called Home. And it was about a lot of the Black Lives Matter movement going on right now. And I got to be... Now, this sounds bad, but I got to be every racist white male in that show. Oh, nice. <laughs> Living the American um, dream. Yeah, right? It's so <laughs> wild that on my resume I get to say, Production, Home, Role, Zimmerman, etc. <laughs> um... <laughs> But it was a great production. He did a great job with it. But no, don't um, don't take me wrong. I'm not racist. I was just saying it for comedic value. No, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. It's always an awkward thing to say. Hey, guys, I got to be every racist kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but my first, uh, this will be my first like big role in college on like the last semester I'm gonna be here. Well, congratulations. The main thing I've been doing are, thank you. The main thing I've been doing is like improv and stand up and stuff. So are you are you graduating or are you switching colleges? What's going on to make this year uh, last year? Graduating, yeah. I walked in with a bunch of AP credits, so I only had to save for three years. Well, congratulations. Good Lucky job on the ever. diploma. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see in spring, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway there, don't worry. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, probably. So we're, we're getting close to that end point. If you want to go ahead and shout out all your stuff, we'll start wrapping this up. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Twitch is uh, Riley Games Grimes. I'm working on changing it, but Twitch is weird about changing your username. I just want to make it shorter and easier to remember. Yeah. But in the meantime, it's Riley Games Grimes. Uh, YouTube, all my other links are on there if you just want to go there and find the other links. But it, I, it's weird what sites had what usernames already. Like, some are R Games Grimes, some are RGG Games. It's It really depends on the site. So, if you go to the Twitch page, in the description, all my other links are there. Uh, YouTube sla- or channel slash Toad Sings, if you want that shit post of a channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Hopefully we get to work together in the future, and we'll see how this goes, right? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'll be here. I officially don't do anything in my Woo! free time. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we may get in contact. We may have you on another another future episode of the podcast if you want. I would love it. I'm here. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll stay in communication. Sure thing. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I guess we'll see you next week if I keep this up. We'll see yeah, how it goes. Wrong. <laughs> we all know how creative product projects go, but hopefully social anxiety will keep us both trying. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. See ya.